Then you can see the wires where the radials wear through on the edges of tires, far and near, peeking up like giant crabs on the edges of sandbars with a nub of their treads above board. And most of the tires are buried deep in the sand, and that's where it helps to have more than one hand to dig out the rim from the sand and the goo and add to your salvage tire hoard. Yet another tire rescued from the river's deep throat as you rock it and rack it back and forth, forth and back, till it's free from the river's strong grass, and you pan out the water and throw it on your boat and gently get in and then try to float with your gunnels an inch from the top of the stream because there's too many tires and your boat's too damn low. If you get all the tires that are stuck in the flow, and then we must ask, where do these tires go? Broad River Watershed Association last spring pulled 22 tires from four and a half miles of river in rural Georgia. And we didn't get 23 because nobody wanted to walk 50 yards upstream to get the last one. Some are recycled. Some are just stored. Some are ground up to make playgrounds and roads, rubberized, asphalt, concrete, and tire-derived aggregate for erosion control and bank stabilization and acoustic flooring and cargo containers and safety mats for athletes and horses and pets. And some are wired together to make bundles like bunches of indestructible giant rotten grapes and dropped offshore in the ocean to create man-made reefs. Habitat, go figure. There's something insanely sarcastic and poetic and ironic about that. This is the shoal lilies in full bloom at the Broad River at Anthony Shoals. That's Mr. Pierce's painting. And just scroll through the rest of these. There's just some photos from the Broad. That dog, Cedar, swims the entire eight mile float along with us when we go. Um, so, the way you get a tire out of the river, the safe way is to wear gloves, which most of us don't do. Wear shoes or you'll cut off your toes. And it is best to go in low river times because you can see the tires. And they're mostly along sandbars. Now, South Georgia, that's just out because you've got the gumbo and the goo, and it takes a tractor and a winch to get the things out of the ground. But where you've got sand and sandbars, you can actually start at the top of that rim and get a little bit of the sand out and start rocking it and get the water flowing. And it's like panning gold and you get the river to work for you and you rock it back and forth to two people and eventually that tire breaks free. We have taken tires that have this much rim showing out of sandbanks and gotten them out. And when you get it up, you just kind of pan it back and forth until all the sand and goo and nasty things are out of there, throw it up in your boat and go. So that's how you get a tire out of the river. 